let me just start by asking you a question because that's basically what I will discuss today. When you hear the word authority, what comes to your mind? You know, what comes to your mind when you hear the word autoridad? What comes to your mind? Okay, so most people you know, would think about someone with the power to control, give orders, and then enforce obedience. You know, kanina you were talking about when when Filipinos go abroad, sugo, sugo na lang. Basically, they have no power. So, yun ang iniisip natin pag authority. Now, can you think of an authority in your life na you really like? Yun mo, in the past, maybe a teacher, maybe a parent, maybe a boss. Can you think of someone na an authority na you really like? Meron ba kayo may isip ng ganon? Meron siguro, no? Isa... Dalawa, swerte na yung dalawa. Karamihan sa atin, walang maisip na pangalan. Now, bakit naghirap mag-isip ng authority na gusto mo? You know, most of us have traumatic experiences with authorities. Meron tayong bad experience sa mga tatay natin, sa mga teacher, mga bosses. Maraming ganun, no? And mas marami yung masamang experience kaysa sa mas maganda. Now, because of this, I am sure you don't like authorities. Tama ba yun? O gusto nyo? Sino sa inyo ang pag meron ng authority na tutuwa? You know, maraming bata ngayon depressed. And one of the source of their depression, their authorities. A lot of children complain about their leaders. Kulang, in mahina. Parang they would say, if only my bosses were better, I would be better also. So, what is it about authorities that you do not like? Ano ba yung ayaw nyo about authority? Many people do not like authorities because we feel that they rob us of our independence or our ability to decide what is wrong and what is right for us. Bakit? Kasi gusto natin, tayo yung tama. Okay, most people feel that they're better off without authorities kasi most of the time, the only thing that authorities may kita, yung mali. Di ba yung notice, yung mga boss nyo, ang parating yung maling sinabi, may ginawa ka, prinesent mo, ginandahan mo, lahat na lang mali. And most young adults today feel that authorities bring out the worst in them. Di ba, I, at a certain point, I shared with you that the uh, millennials are mid-generation. They're so concerned about themselves. So, kinurek yan ng Gen Z. I generation yan sila. Ako na lang ako. So, they don't like authority. So, they start their own businesses even when they're very young. So, ito tanong ko. If authorities are bad, and may isang, hindi, na, hindi tayo makaisip ng maganda, why did God put authorities over us? In fact, sabi pa niya, you submit. Can you turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 13, verse 1? <laughs> Sabi niya, Romans 13 verse 1 sa akin, Every person is to be in subjection to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those which exist are established by God. Yung mga authority na kinabibisita nyo, si God nagbigay sa inyo. No? They're given by God. And yet, when I ask you, think about an authority that you really like, and you even have a hard time thinking of one. Lahat na lang, masama. So si God ba sa dista na bibigyan niya tayo ng taong para bisitin tayo? So, ang tanong ko, why did God put authority over us? Siguro para maintindihan natin bakit we should really understand this word authority. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng word authority? The Latin word or the origin of authority comes from a Latin word called Octoritas. Ang ibig niyang sabihin, author or originator. No, think about it. Ah. It's a very interesting concept. Octoritas means author or originator. <clears throat> Hindi siya the power to control. But instead, the original meaning says power possessed by someone who is the source of knowledge, expertise, and legitimacy. Legitimacy means binigyan talaga siya ng authority to govern. Meron siyang karapatan. So yung, or yung origin word, sabi lang, 
a source of knowledge, a source of expertise, and linagay siya dyan kasi karapat dapat siya mag-govern. Now, let me explain to you what I discovered in the Bible. Sa Bible, the Lord gave authority to certain men to rule over His people. Now, I want you to take note of that word, rule over. The Lord will give certain men authority to rule over, kanino? His people. Tao niya. So in the context that God is owner of everything and master of all things, then to rule over means does not mean to control or to, dom, to, do, to, to have dominion. It does not. Kasi gisugo lang ka sa ginoo, tinuro, sinabihan ka lang ni, ng, ng Lord, rule over them. So ang dapat ang in control, si God. Yung authority, ano sila? The Hebrew word for to have control or dominion is Adon. It's a privilege of an owner and master and sabi ko sa inyo, and husband. So, when God as owner establish leaders to rule over, ang tawag niya dyan, steward. Hindi na yun? Tagapangalaga. So, when God asks a person to rule over, He asks him to take care of people. Now, if, if leaders are asked to take care of people, bakit kayo nagagalit sa kanila? Bakit parang feeling nyo inaabuso kayo, hindi kayo binibigyan ng freedom, hindi kayo pinapadeside, paratin lang sila na susunod? Yung original meaning ng authority in Latin, God wants the authority He put over us to use their knowledge to grow His people and their expertise to lead them to the right path. And most of the time, di ba, for example, siguro si Don Don, sa pag-i-mekanika, ginawa niya, tapos sabi ng boss, ng namo, mali yan, ulitin mo yan. Nakakainis yun, di ba? Pero ulitin ko, they're supposed to be the source of knowledge and expertise. Yun according ng original. Authorities are the source of knowledge and expertise. Kung binago niya, Nagalit ka. Bakit? Bakit ka nagalit? Ang tanong ko, bakit mas marunong ka ba sa kanya? Nagagalit tayo pag binabago ng authority. Pero supposed to be authority. Mas marunong sa'yo. Now, may not be mas marunong technically, but in, in, as a whole, in terms of business, in terms of pagpatakbo, mas marunong sila. So, the other thing I need you to understand about authorities, when they ask to take care, authorities are there to protect. Kasi take care man. Now, kanina I asked you, do you like authorities? And you said no. Now, are you, are you, are you people in authority? Can you imagine what your people are telling to you? Telling about you? Doon kung ganyan ang ugali ninyo sa authority niyo. can you imagine what they're telling about you? Pero if authorities are there to take care of you and protect you, ang tanong ko, bakit parang they don't care? Minsan pa, authority are only concerned about protecting their interests. Hindi yung sa tao nila. Now, one of the reasons why I feel we all struggle with authority, I told, I shared with you a principle before that I, it, to me very important. Sabi ko sa inyo before, when you do not see something as a blessing, you will never enjoy them as a blessing. So therefore, when you do not see someone as a blessing, you will not enjoy that person as a blessing. So when you do not accept their position over you, yun yung sabi nyo, sana wala na lang ako authority, I'll be better off. Pero ang tanong ko, will you really be better off? When you reject their counsel, when you reject what they tell you, will you really be better off? <clears throat> Now, authority rin naman kayo, di ba? Think about your subordinate. Your subordinate to think like you. Na lahat ng authority visit. So may, tin, may sinabi ka, may sinabi ka, reject. What will you do? Sabi mo sa kanila, oh tama ka. What will you do? When your subordinate rejects you, what do you do? What do you do? You start to impose your position. And so, itong authority na ayaw mo, hindi mo pinakinggan, what, what, what will they do? 
they will also impose their position. Yung kinakainis natin sa authority, kasi most of the time, we, when, we don't, when we don't accept them and reject them, they will impose their position. Nakala mo, they're rude. No, because when you reject them, they will impose their position. Yung rudeness nila comes from the fact that the people under them, they will impose because authority sila. Can you turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 13? That's a Romans 13, okay, verse 4. Okay, sabi niya, For it, authority is a minister of God to you for good. But if you do what is evil, what is evil to an authority? You did not follow. Diba? So, when you do not follow authority, sabi, sabi niya, be afraid, for it does not bear the sword for nothing. For it is a minister of good, an avenger who brings wrath to the one who practices evil. Who practices evil? Sinabihan niya, hindi siya sinunod, siniraan pa siya, ano gagawin niya? So, mangisog siya, di ba? He will start to enforce his position. Di ba ganun din kayo? Pero on the other hand, Romans 13 also says, if you do good, there's nothing to be afraid of. So yung, ang, ang, ang authority, lumalaban lang yan pag yung tao niya lumalaban. So saan nagsimula? Like for example, mga bata ngayon, stress. Okay, bata ngayon, stress. One time I said, when your boss gets angry, do not quit. Sabi ng isa, my boss got angry so I quit. I have a high paying job. He does not deserve me. Tanong ko, makita kaya siya ng high paying job pa ulit? Most of the time, tingin natin, may, mayroon bang boss na gusto mag maging masama? I don't think, na, na, dapat nasa kulungan yan. The boss, sabi mo, self-interest, are they really bad? Pero nag, lumalaban lang yan, when the people do not respect them, they will start to impose their position. Pero you ask, no? E paano, anong gagawin natin pag yung authority natin hindi marunong, hindi magaling. So, we should, we, should we follow an authority na ganyan? Meron akong tanong sa inyo. Yung taong hindi magaling and marunong, pag nirespeto mo, what will that person do? No, they will still protect you. No, in fact, they will love you. The only reason why we struggle with authority is because we assume they are bad. Immediately, your assumption, they are bad. It's a struggle, I got say you, diba? When you do not see someone as a blessing, you will never enjoy that someone as a blessing. Now, while authorities are in position of control, they are there to take care and protect you. Now, may tanong ako sa inyo. Sa position niya, because your position in control, did you decide the harm of anyone else or anyone under you? Sinabi, bibisiting ko talaga to. Sinabi mo sa sarili mo yan. I don't think ganun kayo. Lahat kayo, you took care of your people. And yet, you're very frustrated with your people. Bakit? Because your people are the same as us. They assume we're bad. Now, pag naintindihan natin that authorities were given by the Lord to take care of us and to protect us, mas maintindihan natin ano ang submission. Ano ang sub let, let me define that. What is submission? The dictionary defines submission as agreeing to be under someone's authority or control. Ulitin ko ha. The dictionary defines submission as agreeing to be under someone's authority or control. In Hebrew, the word of submission is kaniyah. K-A-N-I-A-H. Ang ibig niyang sabihin to bend or to humble yourself. To bend. To bend to whom? Why do you have to bend to the authority? Ano ang goal ng isang authority sa isang organization? To make the organization succeed. Dama? So why do you have to bend? He's trying to make the organization succeed. What will happen to the organization pag hindi ka nag-bend? Pag pinilit mo yung gusto mo? What will happen? Collapse immediately, di ba? So, as I told you, diba, one of my most read or watched posts is about wife submit to your husband. And sub many, many will say, how can I submit when, the, when my husband is weak? Pero ang tanong ko in the first place, how will he succeed if you do not submit first? Kasi ang tanong ko, tinulungan mo ba talaga siya mag-succeed? Ganun din sa authority niya. Sabi, mahina authority ko. Pero tanong ko, tinulungan niyo ba sila 
mag-succeed. We complain about them. Nung hindi tayo nag-submit, lalong gumulo. To submit does not only mean to give up control of your life. It also means to agree to be under the care and protection of that person. What do I mean? Ganti ko ah. Oftentimes, hindi tayo nag-submit kasi alam natin mali. So, hindi natin sinunod. Nagkamali. Anong, anong gagawin ng leader? Sino sisisihin niya? Ikaw hindi ka. Pero supposing <clears throat> nagkamali, pero sumunod ka, sisihin ka niya? No, he love to protect you. Di ba submission, ulitin ko, submission is not only to give up control. It also means to agree to be under his protection. Unfortunately, most people see authorities as limiting their potential or contrabida sa lahat ng plano nila. Di ba yung feeling nyo kanina? Lahat na lang ng plano ko, mali. Lahat ng nasinagest ko, mali para sa kanya. Now, tayo, we see authorities as rule givers. E puro na lang utos. Pero ang tanong ko, para saan yung utos? Do you know that the way you see authority reflects the way you look, look at the Lord? What do I mean? When God gives you a command, why did He give you commands? Yung commands ba niya, binigay niya kasi gusto niya malimit kayo? And one of His command is submit to your authority. And then struggle tayo. Well, when did God give you command, why did you give Him, why did He give you command? Is it para ikahon ka na hindi ka makagalaw? I told you this before. When God gives you commands, it is to protect you. Kasi alam niya, lahat, pag hindi ka sumunod sa kanya, there will be consequences to your actions. When God told you, worship Him only, why did He say that? Is it just because He's a jealous God? When, ulitin ko, God told you, worship Him only. Bakit niya binigay yun? Supposing you worship other gods, what will happen? May insulto lang ba siya? Di ba how can he protect you pag andun ka tumatakbo? How, he can, how can he provide for you pag doon ka tumatakbo? So sabi niya, worship me only because I can provide for you. When he told you, do not murder or do not lie, pag pumatay ka, sino ang papakulong sa'yo? Yung pamilya ng pinatay mo. Hindi si God. So all his commands were given to protect you. Alam ba niyo, ganun din ang authority ninyo? You have to understand, you are also authorities. Nabibisit kayo pag hindi kayo sinusunod. Now, why did you give those command? Para mabibisit yung tao? Hindi ba para maganda yung trabaho niya? So tayo, gusto ta natin, sundin tayo ng tao natin. Pero pag may authority na tayo, ayaw na natin. Gusto natin, tayo sundin ng authority namin. At unfair, no? Parang sa bansa lang natin yan. In our country, we complain about how messy this country is. Senado, disobedient. Congressman, disobedient. Police, disobedient. Lahat na lang, disobedient. Lahat ayo mag-submit. So how will the leaders succeed when all of us have that attitude? Kaan kaso lang, di ba, today, today sabihin na iba ng panahon ngayon. Iba na mga authority. Parang sinasaya nyo, iba na authority today. Do you know that I used to I used to approach my parents, <clears throat> my boss in the same way, di ba? We always see them in the wrong way, di ba? Ngayon-ngayon sabihin mga anak nyo, maintindihan mo rin ako pag magulang ka na. Ganun din sabi sa atin ng magulang natin eh. There, nothing has changed. In fact, Ecclesiastes Ecclesiastes 1, verse 9 says, That which has been is that which will be. And that which has been done is that which will be done. So there is nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new. Today, ang sinasabi ng mga bata, iba na panahon ngayon. They talk about technology, so dapat hindi na, so pwede na rin silang hindi mag-submit, they know better, so mas marami silang alam. Technologies, the technologies we have today are just tools we can use to move things faster. But things will never change. If you really want to succeed, you submit to your authority. But on the other hand, I told you also, you will never enjoy your eternity if you do not see them as a blessing, if you see them as a curse. 
And the other thing siguro para lang for your sake, no? I understand what you're saying. Minsan masama yung authority. Masama ang sama ng pagkasabi niya. And the reason is, pareho rin sa atin yan. We're all accidental leaders. Alam niyo accidental leaders? Kasi gumaling ka, naging leader ka. Parang si Ryan ngayon, nawala si Pastor L. Ginusto ba niya siya parati nagdadala dito? Accidental yan. Now, si Ryan ba, kompleto na? Hindi. Ano ba? These people, these guys will also have their errors. And ito nakapapansin ko. Most leaders who are not ready to become leaders, they express their fear na baka magkamali ka in anger. Naintindan niyo yan? Ayaw nilang magkamali ka. Meron silang inutos. Hindi ka sumunod. How do they express that? In anger, parang ganun din kayo, di ba? Mga anak nyo, pag yung anak nyo hindi sumunod sa inyo, ba't kayo nagagalit? Nagagalit ba kayo kasi masama kayo magulang? Hindi. Kaya kayo nagagalit kasi natatakot kayo na baka mapasama sila. Nung pinagalitan mo anak mo, ano sabi nila? Saba naman nung nanay ko. Di ba ba't wala namang masama magulang eh? Natatakot lang. Kasi pag hindi ka sumunod, alam nila, pag hindi ka sumunod, may mangyayari. And unfortunately nga, we are not prepared to become leaders. So I'm just telling you, you are not you are not prepared to be a leader. Also, look at the other person as maybe kulang lang. So use your authority to your advantage because naniniwala talaga ako, pwede. Let me illustrate this. Many years ago, tinawagan ako ng isang kaibigan ko. Sabi niya, he was asking my opinion about succession planning. Sabi niya, may tinutulungan siyang kumpanya na ando na sa succession planning. Bawat senior manager, merong apprentice na mga junior manager. Kasi ililipat na yung mga posisyon to prepare for the future. Sabi ng kaibigan ko, the plan is failing. Bakit? Nagkakaroon ng conflict between the senior manager and the junior manager. Now, isipin niyo, ano tingin niyo? Ano ang complain ng, ano ang, ano, bakit nagkakaroon ng conflict? Ulitin ko, the senior manager at junior manager nagkakaroon ng conflict. Ano source ng conflict? Yung junior does not agree with what the senior is saying. Sabi ng junior, ayaw makinig ng mga senior. Tapos yung junior pa frustrated because the senior managers will not allow them to work on the projects they want to work on. Ayaw pa ng senior, mas ma-involve yung junior. So feeling ng junior, pinipigilan yung success nila. Now tanong, yun ba ang rason bakit nagkakaroon ng conflict? So sabi ko sa kaibigan ko, the root of the problem is not that the senior managers are insecure. Because pumayag na sila sa plano. Ano pumayag? Meron ng junior, pumayag sila, eh, di ba? Pero sa, saan anong nangyari? Bakit nagkakaroon ng problema? Sabi nyo kanina, kasi yung junior, ayaw makinig sa senior. Dapat ba makinig ang senior sa junior? Succession eh. Ulit, sabi nyo, of course, succession eh. Naintindihan ba yung succession? Ano succession? Tuturuan ng senior ang junior. So, sino dapat makinig? Ang junior. Di ba? I so, I explain. The goal of succession planning is not for the junior officer to take over. The, role, the goal of succession planning is to, for the senior to pass on everything he has learned to the junior. Kaso maraming idea yung junior. Importante ba yun? Importante hindi. Hindi oy. Ang importante, pagpatuloy muna niya yung plano ng senior. Kailan gagawin yung plano ng junior? Magsa na yung... You understand the issue? Anong issue? You are junior. So, nung ano kayo sa task? Nakibibisit tayo. Ayaw, ayaw makinig ng boss ko. Is that really the role of the junior? The role of the junior officer or the people under is to help the senior succeed. Hindi importante ang gusto mo. Bakit? Importante ang gusto niya. E paano yung gusto mo? Maghintay ka pag ikaw na yung manager. Di ba? The role or the law of the junior is to help the person succeed. Now, pag nagsucceed yung leader, siya lang ba magsasucceed? Di ba kasama ka? Kasi grupo ka eh. 
Pero for example, hindi mo hindi ka nakinig, nag-fail yung, yung senior. Sino si Sinya? Hindi ka nag-support eh. Do you understand? Ulitin ko, ay klaruhin lang natin. In an organization, the success of the organization is the accountability of the leader. For the leader to be, to be successful, everybody below must support. Now, mabaya na pag-usapan, paano pag may idea ka? But pag nag-support ka, gusto niya, kasi plano niya yon, plano niya. Eh paano pag mas maganda plano mo? Hindi importante ngayon yun. Kasi hindi pa ikaw yung boss. You, the only role of the subordinate is to help the person succeed. This is true also in parenting. Anong parenting? Di ba parenting? Nagagalit ang mga bata, hindi sila mapasunod. Hindi pa naman nila role pa, para mag, magplano eh. Di ba? Pa, interesting nga pa ating ano, mga bata, daming plano. Nagagalit sila, isusuporta naman ng nanay nila. Tanong ko sa kanila, sino ba magbabayad ng plano mo? Sino magbabayad? Nanay, tapos ayaw mo makinig sa nanay mo. Hindi naman ikaw magbabayad. Pag ikaw magbayad, gawin mo yung plano mo. No. So if you really want to succeed, if you want to take advantage of your boss, you must humbly learn from them. Yun yun, learn. It is not your role. Now, let, so let me now answer that question. What should you do naman? Paano pag feeling mo tama ka? Mali sila. Di ba? That's our first station, di ba? Tama tayo, mali sila. Di ba? It's very, very frustrating when you really know that you are right and ayaw ka pakinggan ng boss mo. Di ba? That's very frustrating. E nangyari na sa atin yan. Pero meron ako importanteng tanong sa inyo. Okay? Ilisa na. And sana huwag kayo magalit. Paano mo naman nalaman tama ka? Paano mo nalaman tama ka? You normally, ang subordinate, paano mo nalaman tama ka? Today, ha, children will insist on what they do what they want because may nabasa sila. May napagtutunan sa eskwela. May napanood pa sa YouTube. Di ba? Ulitin ko, again, don't be offended. Feeling mo tama ka, mali siya. Pero ang tanong ko, paano na mo namang nalamang tama ka? Sino nagsabi sa'yo tama ka? <laughs> Normally, sino nagsabi sa'yo tama ka? Ang mga bata today, when they insist or what they want, sino, paano nilang lamang tama sila? How? How did they know na tama sila? feeling lang nila. Can you turn your Bible to Proverbs 21? Proverbs 21 verse 2. Sabi dyan, every man's way is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. What does that mean? Ulitin ko, sabi ko, pwedeng tama ka. Okay? Pwedeng tama ka, mali boss mo. When you were sharing your opinion na tama ka, mali siya, what was the intention sa pag-share? The Lord weighs the heart. What was the intention? Was it to help your boss succeed? Or for you to want to show that you are better? Naintindihan niyo yun? Kaya kanina sabi ko eh, di ba? Pag mali ang boss, pero may sumunod, pero nagsabi, pero sumunod lang. Pero pag may kumontra, nagkaroon ng conflict, yan, yari yan. I'm, I'm, that, I'm telling you, yari yan, nakamarka na yan. That's from my experience. Pag yung tao matigas masyadong ulo, and daming sinasabi, nakamarka na yan. Pero yung taong susunod, I will protect that person. I'm, I'm talking from my experience. Ha? Alam ko na, delikado na yan. Kasi delikado rin siya in the future. Ano delikado? Pag ganyan siya ngayon, uulitin niya sa akin in the future. Do you understand what I'm telling you? The Lord weighs the heart. And this has happened to me many times. Yung taong nagreklamo kasi tinutulungan ako, alagaan ko yan. Pero yung taong nagreklamo, pero alam ko, nagreklamo siya at against me, delikado yan. Ulitin ko ha, for me ha, gagawin niya ulit sa akin yan. Okay? So, importante pa rin, importante ba na tama ka mali, boss mo? Hindi. Ang importante, tulungan mo siya. Bakit? Kasi pag tinulungan mo siya, wala siyang masasabi sa'yo. He will protect you. 
katulad na lang nung junior officer versus the senior officer. Naalala nyo? Kaya sila naggalit, ayaw sila pakinggan. Di ba dapat sila muna makinig? Sabi nila, paano yung plano ko? Ano importante plano mo? Importante plano ng boss mo. Kasi hindi ka pa boss. Kaya nga importante yung sinabi ng 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Can you go there? Let me read my version na. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. You younger men. Ano ibig sabihin you younger men? You who are under the elders. Di ba? Likewise, be subject to your elders. And all of you, clothe yourself with humility towards one another. For God is opposed to the proud but gives grace to the humble. Now, feeling mo tama ka. Mali siya. And you went to your boss sharing your opinion in humility. Letting your boss know, boss, I want you to succeed. So therefore, I will share my opinion. Will your boss love you? Of course, di ba? Pero when you go in arrogance, kasi tama ka, mali siya. What will the boss do? The boss will enforce his position, his power over you. Now question, do you like working with arrogant people? Of course not. Then bakit minsan, no? Tayo arrogante. How will, how will our bosses, our superior, listen to us if we will not listen first? Politico, it is not the role of the junior officer to make the organization succeed. It is the role of the junior officer to make the boss succeed. Bible tells us that we should do to others what we want others to do to, you, to us. We are very frustrated when our boss do not listen. Pero siya yung boss eh. What should we do? Di ba? We should listen first in humility. In fact, sa akin, over time, if I'm learning that there is a trait that you, really, that you should pray for, a trait that you should desire, humility. Okay? It will solve a lot of problem. Pero supposing they reject your suggestion. No, they reject niya. Tapos nag-fail talaga. Tama ka pala, nag-fail. Nag what is the role of the subordinate? What is the role of the subordinate? What, may tanong ko, why did, he, why did they hire you? Why did the company hire an unemployee? They only hired an employee to support their plan. Why will they support? Why will they hire employee na mas marunong pa sa kanila? Why do you hire an employee? Ikaw nagrereklamo ko sa empleyadong hindi sumusuport sa iyo. Why did you hire a certain employee? Alam kay dahil mo siya para suportahan ang plano mo. Hindi para gumawa siya ng sarili niyang plano. The reason you're all frustrated sa mga bago niyong hire kasi mas marunong pa sa inyo. Gusto nila yung plano nila. Ulitin ko, I have to under ulit I have to understand this. Okay? Supposing tama ka, bali siya, nag-fail. What should the subordinate do? Just support. Your role is to make them succeed. Kaya nga, God established them. God established authority. Okay? To protect you. But how can authority protect you if we will not also protect them? The success and failure of your boss is his accountability. Never yours. Your responsibility is to do your job, the job that he assigned you to do, to the best that you can. Now, of course, sabi nyo, pero mga, mayroon talagang mga leader na talagang sakims, ang sarili lang na iniisip nila. I can agree with that. Meron naman talaga. Pero I can also tell you that you, you rarely see that in the corporate world because there's check and balance in the corporate world. So, sa, sa gobyerno, Wala pa yan kasi palakasan yan. In the corporate world, there's check and balance. Parang ganito. Okay? May fault yung manager. Pero, yung boss niya will also watch the person. That person will also be watched. Someone's watching over that person. Kung abusado talaga yan, sino magdi-deal sa kanya? Sa gobyerno problema, may palakasan. Now, so, kaya importante, balik tayo sa pinag-aaralan natin. Go back to Romans chapter 13. Pag-aaralan natin, mabuti ito. Let's read verses 1 to 5. Verses 1 to 5. If you agree that the Bible is absolute authority, then let's study Romans 13, 1 to 5. Okay, let me just read my version, just for the recording sake. Verse 1 says, 
Romans 13.1, every person is to be in subjection to the governing authority. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist are established by God. Now, very important, listen to that because I will get back to that. Those which exist are established for, by God. Therefore, whoever resists authority has opposed the ordinance of God, and they who opposes, uh, and those who have opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. For rulers are not a cause of fear for good behavior, but for evil. Let me ask you a question. Before. Who decides your good behavior? For rulers are not cause of fear for good behavior. Who decides your good behavior? Ulitin ko ha. For rulers are not a cause of fear for good behavior, but for evil. Do you want to have no fear of authority? Do what is good and you will have praise from the same. Who decides that you are good? Ulitin ko ha. Who decides that you are good? Kayo? Ha? Kayo? Diba, I told you this before, diba? Can you go to your boss and say, Boss, I, decide, I, I, I need a raise because I've been good. Pwede ba yun? Only the authority can decide when you are good. Now, verse 4 says, For it is a minister of God to you for good. But if you do what is evil, be afraid. Who decides now that you are evil? Be afraid, for it does not bear the sword for nothing. For it is a minister of, of God an avenger who brings wrath on the one who practices evil. Who, who decides the evil yung ginawa mo? Authority, hindi ikaw. And that's a problem today. You decide what is good and evil. Kanina sabi niya, tinanong ko kayo, what's so frustrating about authority? They did not let me decide what is good and evil. Only authority will decide whether good ka or evil ka in whose, in whose eyes? In his eyes. Sa parang sinasabi dito, if you honor authority, now sabi niya sabi, eh paano pag corrupt yung leader? Wala kayong pakialam na corrupt siya. Problema niya yun. Ang problema lang, good ba yung ginawa mo? I evil. Pag good, he will reward. Pag evil, pero ulit, in, in whose eyes? His eyes. Di ba? Now, so let me, let me just clear this. Verse 5 says, Therefore, it is necessary to be in subjection, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. Sabi dito, those who do what they are asked to do, based on the standard of the authority, what will authority do? Bless. Bless and protect. Tama? Okay? They will, sabi niya, you don't have to fear anything. However, those who oppose authority, those who do not do what they, are, they were asked to do, what will authority do? Diba? They will be punished by the authority. Ulitin ko, you're not talking of the standard of the Lord. We're talking of the standard of the authority. Pero God put them there. There is no perfect authority. Lahat yan may mali. So kayo magsasabi, hindi galing kay God yan kasi, for example, si Duterte, hindi galing kay God yan kasi sama, ng, sama magsalita. But God put him there. Yun yung flaw niya. Pero pag ginawa mo yung tama kay Duterte, hindi ka nagbenta ng drugs, papatayin ka niya. Pag nagbenta ka ng drugs, di ba you have to understand, his standard, not yours. Okay? Are you following me? Let's make this practical. There is no perfect authority. Pero when you do what is right for him, what will he do? He will bless you. But if you do, if you do evil against him, pero ito tanong, ito tanong. Balikan natin yung mga question nyo kanina. Why will God sometimes give you a terrible boss? Yung lahat na lang nang nakikita, mali mo. Ulitin ko tanong ha. If God is the one who established authority, why will there be times that He will give you terrible bosses? Ang nakikita, mali mo. Never yung galing mo. Now listen to this. Very important. This is what I've learned. God will not give you what you want. God will give you what you need. Naintindihan yun? 
you are not submissive. So what kind of authority will God give you? A very tough authority to force you to submit. No, kung submissive ka, what kind of boss will God give you? A nice person. Naintindan yun? God will not give you someone you want. God will give you someone you need. In fact, you see that even in your marriage. Sorry, ah. And I'm really sorry. Often, the person he sends to you, okay naman. Pero yung strength niya, weakness mo. And sometimes vice versa. Because he will use both of you to make you better. Unfortunately now, of course, unfortunately, some people just do not get it. So nag-fail. And fail yung marriage. I understand that. Pero if we only understand the situation, God does not give us what we want. God gives us what we need. And to those who fail, hindi kayo nag-fail. Nag-fail yung dalawa. Hindi pwedeng isa. Okay? Ganon din sa boss and subordinate. Kaya naghiwalay, umalis yung tao, hindi ka lang kumpili din kasalanan ng boss. Kasalanan din yung umalis. God will give you authorities that will expose your flaw so that He can bring out your potential. When you do not what, like what your boss is exposing and you run away, what will God do? God will give you a similar boss. O minsan, mas malala pa. You know, as I leave this subject, no, can you turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 and 2? Okay, basahin ko, Matthew 7, 1 and 2. Do not judge so that you will not be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard and measure, it will be measured to you. Siguro ang gusto ko lang sabihin sa inyo, you know, we're very quick to say, tama tayo, mali sila. Siguro it is also proper to us, baka naman tama sila, mali ako. But whatever you whatever you believe, you approach them and your authority with humility. Sabi ko kay sa inyo kanina, di ba? Do you like working with arrogant people? Let me change the question now. Do you like working with humble people? Of course, di ba? So maybe we should really pray, Lord, teach me humility. Kaso lang bantay kayo because masakit na learning yan. So we often invite rat unto ourselves when we insist na tama tayo, mali sila. When we are quick to judge and not quick to listen. So in the same way, ganun din yung gawin ninyo sa authority niyo. If you approach them with humility, they will respond to you gracefully. Okay. Heavenly Father, maraming salamat for just helping us understand better why authorities, uh, why you have established authorities over our lives. Lord, I pray that all of us will start to see authorities as a blessing and not as a curse. And I pray, Lord, that you will all develop humility of heart so that we can submit and agree to be under their protection. But more than that, dear God, I pray that we, we will honor you as the ultimate authority. And by doing that, we will respect those that you have put over us. We thank you for the opportunity to learn, dear God. We are grateful that you continue to teach us. In Jesus' name we pray.